all about the game And how you play it It's all about control If you can take it It's all about your dead If you can play it It's all about pain And who's gonna make it? They say the user lives outside the net and inputs games for pleasure. No one knows for sure, but I intend to find out. Reboot! You know what always bugged me? This whole I intend to find out thing they bring up in the opening was never part of the show. Ever. We never see Bob on a religious crusade to make contact with the user. No attempts made to understand what exactly exists beyond the computer world. It's a hook for stuff that never happens. You might as well have have him say, They say if you put a lot of sugar in champagne, it tastes like ginger ale. No one knows for sure, but I intend to find out. For as much as it relates to the actual show. This is episode 2, Racing the Clock. We open on Dot's diner, which Enzo has taken over as the base for his new delivery service. Alas, nobody seems to be interested. Certainly, it couldn't be because he started this business 20 minutes ago, and all his pop-up ads appear to be inside the diner, where no one can see them. Of course, Enzo can't admit his failure to Dot and Bob, who are trying to fix up a stray tear zipping around the diner's basement. Things take a turn when Megabyte suddenly calls in, requesting Enzo's service. Enzo jumps to the chance, despite the fact that Megabyte is a known virus that just last episode trashed the diner, caused the nullification of dozens of binomes, and assembled an army for invading the supercomputer. Alphanumeric! This is like starting a lawn mowing business and your first customer is Idi Amin. Megabyte uses a kind of portal window to give Enzo a package. Well, no wonder Enzo's delivery business isn't working, they have portal windows! If it was this easy, why doesn't Megabyte just dump a bomb into Bob's apartment while he's sleeping? Megabyte tells Enzo to send the package to someone named Hexadecimal, another known virus within Mainframe, and not the teller who sent it. But when he brings it up to Bob and Dot, they actually respond with a modicum of sense. Why would anyone send a package to Hex? What's in it? A bomb? I don't know. It's a surprise. A, a bomb! bomb. So Bob scans the package to discover an opera mask with an obvious timer on it. And they don't think it's a bomb? Wait, I, I don't get... They think it's a bomb, check it, see that it has a timer, and then suddenly don't think it's a bomb? Let's forget that I'm sure Glitch has other functions that could determine the exact nature of this item, probably detect whatever is considered an explosive element in computer land. It's got a timer! What more do you need? The word bomb printed on the side? Well, while Idiot Bob gives the mask with a timer his seal of approval, he still doesn't want Enzo anywhere close to Hexadecimal or her island of lost angles, so he delivers the package himself. And here we're introduced to Hexadecimal. But not really. There's a lot to say about her, but I won't say it here, because the episode makes no effort in telling us anything about her beyond this is our secondary bad guy. Here's the thing. While they occasionally popped up beforehand, the 90s were really when the story and character arcs started to become a thing in children's television. But it took Reboot almost two seasons to really get into that kind of thing. This is speculation, mind you, but it's probably in part because that with children's syndication, it was fairly common to have the episodes air in random order. This happened to Gargoyles, which is such an arc-driven show that it caused a bit of confusion and had them reconfigure how they presented their arcs in their second season. Of course, if you don't have arcs of any kind, you can just shuffle episodes around freely, and that doesn't hurt when you're involved in an experimental production and you have no idea what order episodes are even going to be finished in. So I understand the logistical reasons for doing a show like this. On the other hand, watching these episodes in their release order reveals a frustrating lack of progression, at least in this first season. This is the episode where we're introduced to Hexadecimal, but the episode treats it like we, the audience, have always known about her, either because the episode got shuffled or we're watching this as a rerun. 
Who exactly is Hexadecimal? Why does she have her own island? What kind of threat does she pose to our heroes? What is her relationship with Megabyte, and why does he want her dead? These are not questions the episode raises to intrigue the audience. They are merely informational voids because the episode seems to be assuming you already know the answers to for whatever reason. Hexadecimal is already one step ahead of everyone, having sent her pet Scuzzy to spy on Megabyte. When Bob arrives with the package, she informs Bob that Megabyte sent it, and then slaps the mask on him and throws him out using Alan Scott's lantern. Enzo, who had followed Bob because he's still an annoying child character and not a one-eyed biker yet, overhears Hexadecimal talking about the bomb. Thankfully, being told it's a bomb is enough to convince Enzo that the mask with the timer is actually a bomb, so he goes and tells Dot. Deliver a package to Megabyte from Hexadecimal? I don't think so. Yes, Bob still thinks he's been sidelined into delivering a novelty timer mask back and forth between two viruses. You know, for most shows, it would be a bad idea to have your main protagonist be the dumbest person in the room, but there you go. A GameCube starts to drop, so Bob changes course and brings the Bob into the game with him, followed shortly by Dot and Enzo. The game this time is Formula One, and when Bob reboots into a game character, the mask turns into his vehicle, so now we've got a ticking clock in order to save poor, dumb Bob. Now, each racing game out there has to have a gimmick, otherwise it's as boring as watching actual racing. So here the vehicles change every couple of laps, first into hovercrafts and then into jet planes, with a couple of Mario Kart style weapons for good measure. Our heroes just aren't very good at this. Both Dot and Enzo get taken out pretty easily, and Bob spins out more than once. Eventually, Dot and Enzo grab a semi-truck out of nowhere and cause Bob and the user to crash into it, Bob ejecting just in time. The bomb goes off, and a bomb is bad enough in mainframe, but one going off in a game is downright apocalyptic, causing a total GameCube implosion. It's actually the best part of the episode. This seems genuinely dangerous and epic. Everyone survives, Enzo tells off Megabyte, and the episode ends. Despite being the second episode of the series, despite introducing a main antagonist, this episode is remarkably skippable. All the good guys are acting stupid for no good reason. Bob himself seems to have been knocked back six grades. The game segments are actually pretty dull. Something like a racing segment requires kinetic energy that the technology just wasn't good at creating at the time. As for it being an introduction to Hexadecimal, it's pretty weak stuff. We get a far better look at her as a character two episodes from now in Medusa Bug. Racing the Clock is stupid filler, and you should probably give it a miss. Huh? Your car is a bomb! You're telling me! It only comes with one nitro! 